Welcome to the show, the Tobacco Road Talk Show. My name is Mullet. This is Goose. We are here. First first ever talk show podcast sort of thing. Happy yeah. to be here. Happy to be here. So today we're going to be talking about the upcoming week for uh, ACC Sports. You know, I'm an NC State fan. He's a he's a Tech fan, even though it's his ECU. But, you know, yeah. you got to stay rep in North Carolina right North now. North Carolina, right. So, Goose, how do you feel about this Week 2 matchups? Uh, the Week 2 matchups, what I'm really looking forward to most is this uh, this Wake Forest-NC State game. It's NC State's first game, and I'm just looking to see how Wake Forest responds after the beatdown they took last week to Trevor Lawrence. Uh, they they did take a beatdown, but the score was not as bad as I thought it could have been. Nah, I, I would agree with that. Flashback to <laughs> NC State playing Clemson last year, and you will know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But... You know, that matchup intrigues me, too. I want to see how Tim Beck, the new offensive coordinator at NC State, comes in. I want to see what he does, you know. I want to see how <laughs> how good he does. Week one, I want to see the improvements of uh, quarterback Devin Leary. You know, yeah. he's had the whole offseason off to season. improve, and he had a yeah, lot a little of, bit of extra time, too. He has. But he's had a lot of pressure put on him right. as a freshman quarterback to come in and fix our offense. But, um, you There's know, a lot of fix in there. there was a lot of fix in there. There was a very lot. But I think I'll be looking for the running game. Watch out for Zonovan Knight, <laughs> no, Ricky Person, right. and uh, Justin Houston. Mm-hmm. All three of those guys, key contributors. That's going to be that. the reason the state wins if they do win. I mean, they're favored by two and a half. But, Man, but yeah, that's, that's two and a half. That's two and a half. It can go either way. <laughs> that's, that's a coin flip. But, right you know, Carter Finley at night. It gets all different vibes, even though there's nobody going to be there. Well, I mean, they got the parents there. They, Governor Roy Cooper has now allowed the state of North Carolina yeah, to yeah, have yeah. parents and family of the players which there. Is, which is always a good thing. Right. But, I mean, at the same time, you know, it's it's going to be – we're taking away the whole crowd element of the game. Right. It's just going to – And that's such a big part of college football. It really is. And especially state. We are mm-hmm. known for being rowdy as can be on – the prime time Saturday night, Thursday night games, yeah. any night games, we are yeah, rowdy, rowdy as can be. Exactly. But flashback to Florida State game. Flashback to Florida State. <laughs> flashback to the big old dude whipping around his shirt, standing exactly. on the pole after we beat him. That, I mean, yeah. that those are just American moments right there. Those are uh, NC State moments. Yep. And another matchup I'm looking forward to is this Georgia Tech UCF game. Georgia Tech, you see it. That will be a good that game. That will be a good game. I'm interested to see how Andrew Thacker and his new defense over there at Tech will handle the up tempo of UCF. But it is, I mean, UCF, they're top, preseason top 25 team, but they've lost over 10 people. They have. That indeed. have opted out. And I'm just curious to see if that Tech defense can keep them off the field for a long time, utilize the running game with JP Mason, and see what they can do. And build off of their momentum they, they created last them. week. Another yeah. intriguing matchup. Yep. Duke and Boston College. <laughs> Chase I, Bryce. Chase Bryce had a solid week. Solid one week. Outing. Solid and week. It's I mean, like they say, you know, he had a great week one or pretty solid week one went. outing against Notre Dame. But how does he follow up? Also, he's not going to be facing such a tough defense that the Irish that defense is, provides. The Irish defense playing provides. a Boston College team who's projected to finish bottom bottom ten. Bottom fifteen, uh, bottom fifteen of the <laughs> ACC projected to finish last in the ACC. About so, what are your thoughts on that game? Um, I'm just at you know, Wallace Wade as well. Uh, at Wallace Wade, well, I know Duke has opted not to have any fans at the fall sports. So I mean, I know not many people attended Duke games anymore. Yeah, no, I'm just I mean, kidding. You know, like um, two thousand people. But it, I'm just curious to see. If he can cut down on those mental errors, and I know David Cutcliffe is a big quarterback coach. He is. He is very good. Runs that offense. I Eli mean, Payton. Yeah, that exactly. Was. And I'm um, just curious to see if uh, Chase can bounce back and hook the Blue Devils up with a win. That's true. That's true. Well, how about the new NCAA start date for college basketball? <clears throat> Late November. Late November. Right well, before Thanksgiving. Right before Thanksgiving. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I'm glad to know we're having a start date, and that's where I think we need to start, is just getting a date and making sure everyone's safe. That's true. And now, true. I mean, I see the thing with eliminating tournaments going out of country or out of territory. Yes, the um, Maui Invitational moving up into Miami. North Carolina. No, the Maui Invitational. Oh, Maui. The Maui's no. coming to North Carolina. Is it Asheville? Uh, I don't know where it I think is. It's in I Asheville. just read somewhere about it today. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Well, but, yeah. um, but I know the, uh, the Diamond Head. I think it's moving to Miami. Mm-hmm. A couple of those beach tournaments, Myrtle mm-hmm. Beach Invitational, mm-hmm. I think is going to uh, Miami. So that's, I'm just, I see the point in doing that to keep it 
centralized. Keep it in one s- central place. Yeah, right, that's right, very right. true, very true. Either way, if it does break out, it'll be at one place and not 5,000 different places. Exactly, with a bunch exactly. of different people getting infected. Now, college football. Back to college football. Right. <laughs> top five. Give me your top five right now. In? ACC. In the ACC. Well, I mean, there's the big obvious. Clemson. Um, <laughs> I mean, I mean, Clemson, there's, right now, there's just, let's be frank, there's no stopping them within the first three weeks. That's true. That's true. Look at their schedule. Travis. They've got a 99.8% chance to beat the Citadel. Now, I will say, the Citadel is coming off an ACC win. If you remember last year, I hated this game. Trust me, I hated this game. But I had to sit there and watch it. But it was Collins' first year at Tech. What are you going to do? I mean, and the Citadel ran the triple option, which really pained me to watch. I thought I was done with it, but well, no. Last year wasn't David Dorn's first year, but we all saw how that one ended. So <laughs> I don't know what to think anymore. But, uh, okay, so I definitely got Clemson in my number one. Mm-hmm. But when I look at it, I looked at the final score, right, of this Georgia tech Florida State game. Final score was 16-13. You got a redshirt freshman, or no, excuse me, a true freshman quarterback, Jeff Sims, throws two interceptions in, in the red zone. Now, Cuts those interceptions out. Capitalizes on those. Capitalizes and scores. The final of that game would have been 37-13 to 13 Georgia Tech. That's assuming they score two touchdowns. That is assuming assuming they score two touchdowns. And, okay, say they get four, 37. two field goals. Yeah, it would have been 37-13 to 13 would have been the final. Yeah, I did the math. Um, and then one thing I need to see from them, though, is the special teams unit. Presley Harvard not worried about punting. Not worried about that. The man can boom kicks. It's the true freshman kicker. Those as are always NC scary State, things. As an NC State fan, I know about kickers. I've had my fair share of kicking incidents. So right now, with I mean, that being said, I would actually throw him in a three spot. But my number two. You put Tech in the third spot? In the third spot. You put I think Tech in I, your top five? I, no, I'm, trust me. I'm, I've been watching their... Hold on. And no, this is not biased, by the way. This is actually full-blooded opinion. I promise you. And then I feel like North Carolina is the number An two. An opinion team. is a bias. Mm, I, well, yeah, I mean, this, oh, is, yeah. this is based on what I've seen, not my heart. I'm speaking with my head, not my heart. Yeah. <laughs> well, then where does Notre Dame come in in this top five? Fourth. I, they were very. They were too close to Duke for me. I guess. I guess. That I mean, I, I thought Notre Dame should have blown Duke out the water. Well, you also got to account for the fact that everybody's just coming back. I thought Wake Clemson was going to kill Wake Forest more than they did. They did, but they also called. They the were very. Off. They were a very dominant team, though I will admit, during that game, the whole game. Yeah, but, I mean, they called the dogs off. Yeah, they peed on the fire and called the dogs. But so, exactly. who, who's going to be your number five spot? My number five spot. Let's see. Pitt. My number five is Pitt. Their defense is back and stronger than ever. If they, if they, if Kenny Pickett can throw Kenny the ball, Pickett, I like Kenny Pickett. If Kenny Pickett can be more precise this year and minimize the turnovers, Pitt's got a shot. Pitt's got a really good shot. In the words of Lee Corso, not so fast. <laughs> <laughs> my number one, Clemson, of course. I mean, right. there's just going to be no stopping Clemson. My number two, North Carolina. That, that I mean, you got to get – I mean, Sam after what – Sam Howell did not have a good week one outing, but I believe he'll bounce back. And He didn't have a good – State fan. He didn't have a good first three quarters, but that fourth quarter, they showed you what they could yes. do. Yes, and I – Saw him against State last year. He didn't come out in the first quarter, first half, really. Uh, you know, we're winning 10 nothing at halftime. And then all of a sudden, the, gate, the gates flood open and UNC scores 42 unanswered points in the second half. So, I can see, I've seen what this North Carolina team can do. And uh, I just, I'm a little nervous. Mac is back. A little ner- Mac is sadly back, and I don't like that. <laughs> My number three team, I am putting in Miami. And here oh, is why. why. Miami is back. Okay? No, everyone said Miami, Miami is back. Miami is back. For the past however some years. They said Miami's back. Miami's back. Then they play a good team and they get absolutely Mark Richt had to retire in order. Yeah, you know where he is now? 
the Sitting booth. there doing the same thing we are. In the booth. In the booth. <laughs> so, but yes, I feel like Miami's going to come back, you know, just like they, they have us, so that's an automatic win. I just they have I, a cakewalk I, game against us, so I mean, I, I just feel like Miami's got a good shot. Not, well, no, I'm not going to say they're going to the championship or anything. I'm not going to go that far. But I will say they you do have, have a chance. You have Miami over Notre Dame. I, I just don't see it. You have Pitt over Miami? What is this? Pitt My number four. Is I My just think four Miami teams coaching. Notre Dame. Now, I feel like this Notre Dame team could be a dark horse in this conference. In this conference. Now, the one I mean, nobody, everybody's projecting them to do good. Yes, that's true. But <laughs> the, the underrated do good. They're, yes. I think that people have said Miami's going to be very good. Miami's, I mean, Notre Dame got off to a little bit of a slow start. Miami came out of the gates against UAB. Um, but it's UAB. Hey, UAB was ranked last year. How quick to forget are you? Yes. <laughs> they were. But they were ranked last year when the top 25 was really the top 25. That yeah. when the top 25 was Three top 25 out of 50 teams. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, but yes. So, Notre Dame, I feel like they could potentially go to the championship. I feel like they have a good shot at making the playoff potentially. Mm-hmm. I mean, they had a rough week one outing. Everybody's going to have a rough week one outing. But I think that team will bounce back. My number five team. Number five team? Number five team is the Virginia Tech Hokies. They had a true freshman quarterback start last year in Mr. Hooker. Mr. Hooker will be back. Okay? <laughs> okay. This year. No, I don't want to say – I'm. My, I like UVA too. So, you know, as this, this kind of stuff just pains me to say. But – you know, Virginia Tech, they're going to bounce back this year. They had first two games canceled against us and against UVA, respectively. And so... <laughs> you don't get two shots of beating them in a row. So. That's true. But, Tom, um, so I think... But that game is rescheduled. That game is rescheduled. Yes. And so they'll open up against us uh, at Lane. Uh, I'm not looking forward to that. But um, I feel like Tech can be a really a real dark horse this year. A little bit darker horse than um, Notre Dame. Because oh. people are sleeping on Tech. And I'm calling it right now. Watch out for Tech. Watch out for Tech. I'm just... Not I'm Georgia not, Tech. Virginia Tech. I don't sleep on Tech either. The other Tech. Oh, I, I slept on Tech. I, hey. I, it's a pretty comfortable pillow, too. <laughs> I'm just saying, man. I'm just saying. Best night sleep you'll ever get. It's like sleeping on that Dak Prescott mattress, you know, where it adjusts, your, uh, adjusts the hey, you know, setting of the bed. Dak Prescott's last game, who do you lose to? Georgia Tech. Oh, uh, the Rams. We're not talking about NFL here, Bo. <laughs> I'm, th- I'm just saying. Uh, the only concern I have about Virginia Tech is the long wait and the COVID concerns they've had. But on the flip side of that, they have scouting on teams that nobody else has on them. So look for them to come out of the gate week one firing on all cylinders. Now, I'm saying... They are playing us week one, and we haven't played last week, so they'll only have one game of scouting on us, and obviously we're not going to open up the whole playbook week one. Right. But I think after two weeks, three weeks, whenever yeah. they play the next team, um, they're looking they're looking good. I mean, they, they've got the scouting on teams. They, they will have only played one game. Yep. All their teams have played three or four games. You know, you know getting in that field is just – it's you've also got to think about whether well, their players hold up endurance-wise. Because, I mean, conditioning-wise, they have well, they to have also much. have weeks to practice. Cause right. Are they shut down right now? Um, or I think they're a, open back up now. So they're, they have, what, two weeks a week? They have one week to just get everybody ready, get everybody focused, game-centered, and then get out there and I'll tell you what, though. There try ain't and nothing compete. like saying man, at Lane Stadium, though. Man, That's I'll tell you what. Different. I watched them against Clemson, and I had a cousin at that game, and he sent me a mm-hmm. picture of him. At the game, right during Inter Sandman, I mean, everybody jumping around, going it's, crazy. It's, an atmosphere. It, it's it what makes you something. miss college football. That is what makes you miss college football. But it's back. And it is back, and it is booming. It's stronger than ever. It is stronger than Well, I don't know about that, but we will see. And, and the, the Big Ten unique. coming back. The Big Ten is coming October back. October 24th. Yes, it is. Get ready for it. That, see, I'm just curious to see what the Pac 12 is going to do. Well, let's be honest here. Is the Pac-12 even going to make the college football playoff? No, they're always the five and six. <laughs> I mean, they they are always right there with one or two teams, 
and they always miss out. It's always one or two things. It is. It's, a, it's always either Oregon or Utah. You saw last year, Oregon, yeah. USC for a good long while yeah, there when they had uh, Mr. Sam Darnold. Yeah, Mr. Darnold. Now playing that over there at the, up in New York. East Rutherford. East Rutherford, New Jersey. Yep. Yep. For the Jets. For the Jets. Well, thank you for tuning in for week one of our uh, podcast, the Tobacco Road Talk Show. Look forward to see you all again, and uh, have a great day, and God bless. I'm Goose. This is Mullet. We'll see you later.